Okay, so far we have learned about the Indonesian people who came to Australia in their fishing boats looking for the sea cucumbers and the evidence that they had been here. And then we looked at what had been the exploration, the age of exploration or the age of discovery that the Europeans went out in search of countries that they could trade or colonise. This time, we're going to look at the explorers that actually came to Australia. I'll just go to our PowerPoint. And the first one that we're going to look at is William Jans. Now, so he was born in 1570 um, and he died in 1630. And William Jans was a Dutch man who had been sent to Bantam in the Dutch East Indies. So we said before that the Dutch East Indies are now known as Indonesia and Bantam was um, a, a site there that the Dutch um, were positioned in. Willem Jans is believed to be the first European to land in Australia, although he didn't know it at the time. He left Bantam in 1605, sailing on the Dufkin, which means, which is, um, Dutch for Little Dove. He was sent to New Guinea in search of new trade opportunities. So they knew about New Guinea. And here is his voyage here. So we'll follow the arrows, starting there, going down here, coming up onto New Guinea, and then around to return back home again. However, he didn't know that he'd found it. So let's read through it. Jan sailed from Bantam to the south coast of New Guinea. Here's the south, south coast of New Guinea here. He continued down what he thought was a southern extension of that coast. So you can see that the top of Australia here is very close to the bottom of New Guinea there. And so as he came around this point and was tracking east, he thought he was still on a part of New Guinea. It was in fact the western coast of the Cape York Peninsula in Queensland. This is the Cape York Peninsula here. He made maps of 320 kilometres of the Australian coast, believing it to be New Guinea. He found the land to be swampy and the people to be inhospitable, the people being the Aboriginal people. 10 of his men were killed by the Aboriginal people. So he decided it wasn't worth looking around anymore, sailed so back up to New Guinea and across back to Bantam again in um, Indonesia. That was the first European man to come to Australia. And even though he didn't realise he was in Australia, um, that was part of the exploration. Then in 1580, um, as a, this was when he was born. Dirk Hartog was born in 1580. He died in 1621. So you can see he only lived for 41 years. Dirk Hartog was also a Dutch man and a captain in the merchant navy. He was assigned to a ship to sail from Amsterdam to the Dutch East Indies. The Dutch East Indies is Indonesia. There we can see his voyage leaving Amsterdam, going over England, around the west coast of Africa, and after leaving the Cape of Good Hope in Africa, here's the Cape of Good Hope, Hartog and his crew sailed too far south and east until they reached the west coast of Australia. So their navigation wasn't great. They landed on a cape of an island off the west coast that he named Hartog Island. The cape was named Cape Inscription after he left, an inscription on a pewter plate nailed to a post. So they didn't know where they were, but when they landed there, they decided to leave the pewter plate there with an inscription so that in future times when somebody else found it, they would know that Dirk Hartog and his people had already been there. And now we come to Abel Tasman. And he was born in 1603. Um, he died in 1659. Abel Tasman was a well-educated Dutchman. He became a skilled navigator and skipper. A skipper is the captain of a boat. In 1638, he and his wife sailed to the Dutch East Indies. 
By 1642, Dutch explorers had made several disconnected trips to the west coast of Australia. They were still unsure of whether this was one large country or many islands. Many areas of the west coast of Australia are inhospitable and the explorers were not convinced the land was worth colonising. And here's Abel Tasman's trips. He, he made several. In 1642, which is the red arrow, in 1642, Abel Tasman was instructed to explore the Indian Ocean south of the usual trade routes. He was to search for a new passage to Chile. And on this voyage, he discovered Van Diemen's Land, which is what we now call Tasmania, after Abel Tasman. Um, he then sailed on from finding Tasmania and he sailed on to discover New Zealand. In 1644, Tasman was instructed to explore the relationships between New Guinea, up here, the west coast of Australia, and Van Diemen's Land, now Tasmania. So here's his next trip in green. And you can see that he starts out here in Batavia, which was the name we now call, the city that we now call Jakarta. And he sailed across. Remember, he had to work out what the connections were between New Guinea and Australia. He actually didn't go down to Tasmania on this trip. And it was believed at that stage that Tasmania was joined onto the bottom of the Australian uh, landmass. So this is his second trip here where he sails across to New Guinea, much the same route as Willem Jans, except he now realises that, that Australia is a separate um, continent. He starts onto the Gulf country here and is charting the northwest, the north and the west coast of Australia before he sails back to Batavia again. Okay, our last one we're going to look at is William Dampier. He, he was a buccaneer, which is a name we would also call a pirate. And on one of his voyages in 1688, he spent three months around the area of King's Sound in Western Australia. In 1697, he published a book about his travels in, so back in um, England, which established him as an expert on the South Seas. As a result, he was made a captain in the British Navy and in 1699 set sail to further explore the South, the South Seas in a ship called HMS Roebuck. And here he is in the Dutch East Indies at Batavia, which we now know as Jakarta. So, sorry, came from this way, came from England and hit the west coast of Australia. On the expedition in 1699, he charted the waters of northwest Australia from Shark Bay to Roebuck Bay. So Shark Bay here, where we now have places like Monkey Mia is just off there, um, where the dolphins come in, and then up the west coast of Australia, and then at Ro to Roebuck Bay and Roebuck Bay named after the, his ship. He named the Dampier Peninsula in Western Australia. He then sailed north to chart the northern coastline of New Guinea. So up here where he sailed around, looking at the north coast of New Guinea, this landmass here is New Guinea, and then back to Batavia. His impression of Australia was that it was barren and dry and inhabited by the most miserable people in the world. And that is a direct quote from his diary, inhabited by the most miserable people in the world. Okay, let's just check back in with our learning intention. We aim to learn about the early explorers before Captain Cook. And if we're successful, you should be able to explain how we know Indonesian fishermen visited Northern Australia before 1770. And you should be able to name three early explorers before Captain Cook and where they landed. But to help you with that, there are some follow-up activities. There are three pages of closed passages, one each on Hartog, Tasman and Dampier. So you need to complete the missing words in those passages 
and that will help consolidate your history knowledge after that um, after the PowerPoint. Or of course, you're always welcome to come back and watch the PowerPoint again if you think you might have missed some things. Bye everyone.